Speed, pace, momentum, velocity. Our world is increasingly fast and our culture is immediate. Everything moves quickly. Moving your money shouldn't be any different. With Gravity, you can buy and sell Bitcoin instantly. We're building the Bitcoin bank of the future today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Crypto Time. My name's James Coughlin and I'm joined by my usual co-host, Antonio Shillingford. How are you today, mate? I'm doing rather fine. How about yourself? Yeah, very good. I'm very much looking forward to jumping into this episode. We're going to be talking all about what's happening on the 4th of February, which is only literally less than 24 hours away now. Um, and it's been exciting stuff. So without further ado, let's kick into what's going to be happening with the Genesis upgrade on BSV. So firstly, let's set the scene. Let's have a look at what's been happening in relation to Testnet um, to see how things have actually been working. Is it all been successful? Has there been any issues? Um, well, to put that one out there straight away, absolutely no issues. Things have been working extremely well. Now, as we mentioned in the last episode, um, there's been some fantastic work being done. Let's really look at what that work is, when it was done, and how much, obviously, of an improvement it actually has been to the network. So on January 25th, the BSV scaling testnet proved it's capable of something far greater. Mining a block just over one gigabyte, uh, which was actually 5,449,866 transactions in that one block. Now that is seriously impressive, seriously big numbers, and it's exactly what we need to see. Now, that's only on a testnet version so far. Now, just to be clear, when the testnet works, it operates in very similar conditions as to what's happening in the real world on the actual BSV network itself um, to ensure that they're actually being realistic as to what's going to happen and how it's going to work. They have come back very positively from this. Um, Steve Shadders, even, for example, six months ago, was very, very positive about what was happening on the BSV network and how things were going to operate going forward. And it does seem to be that he's ticking every box that they've spoken about up until this point, which has been very interesting indeed. Now what I wanted to do was look into a little bit of um, what this upgrade is going to upgrades actually going to include and how that's going to operate going forward rather than just on a testnet capacity. Yeah, this upgrade has been something that a lot of us have been really, really excited for because it's a lot of what the crypto, the real crypto community has been waiting for. Um, something that fully stably works but not just that, it doesn't give you any form of limitations. And that's exactly what the Genesis upgrade does. It fixes all of the things that the original Bitcoin core developers installed into Bitcoin core, which is BTC. So as we said at the start of the episode, it's about returning as close to that original white paper as we possibly can. Yeah. We know that it can't go right the way back to the exact form of what it was, but it's about going back to the point of actually achieving what they were trying to achieve back at the point of creating that document yeah. in the first place. So we won't go too technical with all of this. Uh, we'll just give it a sort of general overview. Yep. So what this Genesis upgrade really means, it means that we are now removing all block size limitations. So we are no longer going to be pegged to two gigabyte blocks, which BSV is currently pegged to. It means that it now goes to minus choice, meaning that if we need more capacity, guess what? We've got it. Not just that, it's returning to the original protocol of bitcoin that was written in the white paper and with that being said it's turning on a lot of the opcodes that were effectively turned off by the core development team and those opcodes allow a lot of the developers within this space to do just cool things and as opposed to us labeling all of the different cool things you're just going to see it in real life yeah and i think that's the real exciting part about all of this um, and when we talk about these cool things that are going on one thing that we really realize is it's all about transactions actually going through the network in essence these um, coins that are out there are all fantastic as a utility but they need to be actually used right uh, what a lot of the issue is at the moment is people believe that today's value um, isn't going to be as high as what potentially it could be tomorrow therefore they hold on to their coins and don't use them don't spend them difference being here between for example what we have on bitcoin core versus what we have on Bitcoin SV is we have some real fantastic applications which have been built on top of SV, which actually enable people to use it and actually want to use it for everyday things um, that are out there. And that isn't something that really has been that possible across the board on crypto up until this point. And I think that is something that's super exciting to see them turn the key and switch back on from my point of view. Yeah. And we've seen quite a few videos of Road to Genesis, which um, have actually been quite exciting to watch in general, uh, just to see what 
what the processes are. And we know our internal process, which was, to be honest with you, not that hard. Uh, we just needed to install the new software. And that was pretty much it, really. Then we got to wait for the block height that was mentioned earlier. Then Genesis is actually activated. And from that point on, we just need to monitor, make sure that there are no errors, nothing pops up. But just as a bit of a heads up to everyone. Now, once the block activation takes place, there can be some delays with some of the exchanges within the space on depositing funds and withdrawing funds when yeah, it comes to BSV. Yeah. Because at that particular point, of course, a lot of these companies are going to be doing the exact same that we're doing, mm -hmm. just monitoring the process, making sure that, of course, they're not, there are no errors and that everything is quite simply good. Yeah, and a safe environment to move yeah. forward to. Um, and I think that is very important that they do do that. And, uh, you know, just have a little bit of patience throughout that time. I think it's going to be something that works extremely well throughout history. We've seen that the SV team have worked extremely well to their dates previously. They've literally ticked the boxes that they said they were going to mm -hmm. tick. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I don't see this being any different whatsoever. Uh, but fair warning, and I think it's a very good point to do. So I think, to be honest with you, that's all the boring stuff out the way. Now let's talk about the exciting things that this brings to the space. Now, I just touched a little bit on um, you know enterprise um, and having applications built on top of it. But the difference being now is rather than, for example, people looking at this as a cool idea that could potentially work in the future, with the block size limit being removed, it now allows global enterprise to look at this as a real viable option that wasn't there before. They needed to have huge amounts of transaction capacity to put their businesses on top of it. Now, we've heard lots of rumors in the background about potentially things happening yeah. um, and these large companies putting the actual uh, transactions through. Now, something also that came with these rumors and it was a very clear part to these rumors was that they will not go ahead and do this until the option is fully there so that they know that their businesses can be 100% sustained. Because as we know, um, you know, even from, for example, the Facebook film that came out uh, talking about Mark Zuckerberg and all the rest of it, they can't have any downtime, right? Any downtime ruins the whole thing across the board. It ruins the trust of what's going to happen going forward and it ruins the actual enterprise itself in terms of the fact that it needs to operate smoothly, especially if you're going to be jumping into a territory such as Bitcoin SV. They need it to work right. And this is something that they need to get correct from the very start point. And I think this is something that's going to be very cool with the new block size that's going to be available to them. Yeah. And also locking down the protocol. Mm -hmm. Now, allowing all of these people to invest the money that they need to invest to build up on top of the infrastructure that is, of course, BSV. And they don't have to worry about BSV moving the goalpost. So all of the money that they invested could potentially be absolutely worth nothing um, with a lot of these other projects within the space. But the fact that BSV are locking down the protocol now gives a lot of these companies the confidence that they need. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think this is a really nice way to wrap up this episode. One thing I will say right now is I think this year is going to be a massive one for global enterprise, specifically on top of BSV, which I'm very excited to see. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of uh, Crypto Time. If you are interested in hitting that comment section below, we'd love to know what your thoughts are in relation to the actual upgrade uh, to Genesis, and how you think it's going to operate and whether you think it's going to be successful. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying the content please hit that like subscribe and notification button and if you prefer to listen we're on spotify and itunes as always bye for now peace and love